Hi, I'm Scott Mansell and welcome to Driver 61's Ask a Coach series. Today's question comes from Ian Walton in the UK and he says, I'd like to know how to build the skills and confidence to cope with fast corners as I often get oversteer. Well, that's an excellent question. I personally love fast corners. They're very exciting, but if you don't have the confidence to go through them quickly, they can be very scary. And if you make a small mistake, the consequences can be massive. So it's an excellent question and my first advice is to pick a corner that you actually already know. We want to try and build the confidence so that you can focus on your driving technique rather than thinking about where the corner is going or rather the details of the corner such as the curbing or if there's a bump or a change in tarmac as you're going through the corner. So pick a corner that you're comfortable with, pick a corner that you're familiar with and that will make things a lot easier and open up some mental capacity so that you can think about your inputs into the car rather than about the corner. My next piece of advice is to use a fast corner that has a lot of runoff. Now I've worked with lots and lots of drivers and when we're working on the, the fast corner work, because it often is a challenge for, for all drivers, we'll go to a circuit such as Silverstone, um, Silverstone National in particular, um, and we'll work on cops for the whole day because it has lots of runoff on the outside. We can make a mistake and it's not going to have uh, massive consequences. We're not going to spin and hit the barrier because there's a lot of runoff on the outside there. If you do make a mistake when you're going through cops, you can just correct the car and run out wide. There's no real issue there. Now, the other reason for using Silverstone National is it, it's a very short circuit. Um, maybe a, a minute lap, maybe just over a minute. So you get really high repetition of going through the quick corner at Cops. Now the next piece of advice is very simple, but you need to build up slowly in these quick corners. Again, if, if we make a mistake, then the consequences can be huge. But also when you're coming into a quick corner, everything is so fine, you need to be as smooth as possible. So again, we always talk about vision on the driver61.com site. Now, in a fast corner, it's critically important. Because you're approaching the corner a lot quicker, you need to look much further ahead of yourself. Think about two seconds ahead of yourself so that you have time to process all the details of the corner as you're entering, going through, and then exiting the corner. Now, Ian mentions that he gets oversteer in the corner, in the fast corners. Now, he doesn't exactly describe whether it's on the entry or the exit or at the apex, but usually we can get oversteer on the entry to a fast corner. Many drivers overslow the car as they come into a quick corner because they're at capacity and they're not quite confident enough to go through the corner as quick as they should. So if you overslow the car as you come into the corner, you drop the nose, and if you've watched our weight transfer videos on the Drivers University, you'll understand this, but you drop the nose as you come into the corner, which puts more load through the front tires. When you have more load at the front than the rear, the front has more grip, the rear doesn't have enough, and you turn in and the car oversteers. This adds to your lack of confidence. So actually, it's a, it's a, it's a violent circle because if you slow a car down too much, you drop the nose too much, you get oversteer and you think, I can't possibly go through this corner any quicker, so I'm gonna slow the car down even more. Actually, what you need, might need to do is to come off the brakes a little bit smoother and a little bit earlier so the front of the car comes up um, and the platform of the car is a lot more balanced. Then when you turn into the corner, the rear is more stable, the rear has more grip. Then you can go through the corner at the same speed but nowhere near the edge of grip and that then gives you the confidence to try and carry even more speed through that quick corner. Now uh, a really good tip is if the corners almost flat out or flat out, in the previous corner, purposefully get a, a poor exit so that you can keep the car flat through that next quick corner. So at the previous corner, come out, just wait a few seconds before you finally get flat out on the throttle. This means that your, your maximum speed down the following straight, just before the quick uh, corner, is at a few miles an hour less. That means that we don't have to lift as we're coming into the corner, which means that we don't get this weight transfer uh, to the front of the car, which means that the, the car shouldn't oversteer and we can have the confidence to go through that corner flat out. Then gradually, as you get more and more confident, 
you get a better and better exit from the previous corner and hopefully then we get a, a full 100% exit from the previous corner and we might be able to keep the car flat out as we enter the quick corner. Now if the quick corner isn't flat out and isn't quite flat out you need to be very very careful with the pedals whether it's just a lift or whether it's a, a slight brake um, we need to be very very smooth so that we don't get that weight transfer to the front of the car so that we disrupt the balance as little as possible and so we can carry as much speed through the quick corner as we can. In addition to being super smooth on the pedals we also need to be very very smooth with our steering input. Any harsh input when we're going into a quick corner transfers the load of the car too quickly and can cause us to brake traction prematurely. So everything that we do, whether it's just a gentle lift or a very gentle brake, and we're not talking about a, a dab on the brakes, we should never just dab the brakes as we're coming into a quick corner because that makes the car do this. We transfer the load way too quickly and it's all moving around and we're making the car work too hard. So it's a it's more of a gentle brush on the brakes if we do need to do that. But back to the steering, the steering should be silky, silky smooth so that when we turn the steering wheel, we transfer the weight and the load to the outside of the car as smoothly as possible. If you've watched the grip tutorial on the driver's university, you'll know that we want to transfer that weight as smoothly as we can so we keep the grip limit as high as possible. Remember, the, the more weight that we transfer, the lower the grip threshold is. So we want to make sure that we move that mass around the car as smoothly as we possibly can. Okay, so that's all for this Ask a Coach video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please share and also subscribe just down here to the Driver61 channel. And if you'd like to see more of the Drivers University, which goes over these techniques in a lot more detail, please click up here and check out the university on driver61.com. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time.